Thank you for watching today's message from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Our message today is... Grace and peace are yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Dear stars of God's light in this dark world, it's been a fun week of EBS. I really did enjoy myself, and I think a lot of the kids were having a good time too. I hope our teachers also had a, a, a wonderful time. Uh, it's it, it's been an exciting week. Uh, like I mentioned in the introduction, we we pretended we were traveling out into space and visiting the stars and spending time in space station salvation as we learned about those stars. And we learned about the stars in the Bible. And now you may be thinking, well, I can't think of that many stories in the Bible that involve stars. But uh, there are actually several. Uh, we went back to Genesis 1 where God showed his power and love for his people by creating the, the beautiful stars in the sky, including the sun and the moon, uh, to, to watch over us, to make signs for seasons and days and years, as he says in Genesis chapter 1. Then staying in Genesis, we turned to the life of Abraham and watched as God directed his eyes to look up to the stars in the sky and, and see an example of how generous God was going to be to Abraham in giving him more children than he could possibly count. We turn to the life of Jesus as we saw his birth in Bethlehem beneath the light of the star that God put in the sky to mark his birth. We heard how the sun, our star, turned out during Jesus' death, his suffering and death on the cross. And today we focus on the fact that God has made us to be stars in this dark world, to shine his light of life to the people around us so that they also may know Jesus as the Savior and come to worship him as the wise men followed God's star to baby Jesus and worshiped him too. Today, we remember and recognize the truth that believers shine the light of life. Just think of how much we depend on light from the sun and the stars in our lives. Without the light of the sun, our entire world would be a frozen block of ice and, and nothing, absolutely nothing, would be able to live. We need the light of the sun in order for plants to grow, for us to have food to eat. We need light for our weather and our seasons to happen. We need light so that we can see where we're going and see what we're doing. Light is vitally important. It's important for life. Without it, we would certainly be dead. It seems quite amazing to think of something like that that we often take for granted. Lord, thank you for giving us light. Spiritually, we'd also be dead if it wasn't for the light, the light of life, that is. We'd be completely dead and without hope, without hope of salvation. Our hearts would be frozen blocks of ice that completely hate the holy God because he condemns us for our sin. That's how we were by nature. Without light, we couldn't see where we were going or what we were doing. We weren't able to do anything that could change our situation or help us out. But God sent his light into our hearts through the work of the Holy Spirit. He showed us God's love for us and his forgiveness, his plan of salvation, his gift of forgiveness, full and free, by showing us that Jesus' death on the cross, where he suffered and died 2,000 years ago, was payment for our sins so that we could no longer be punished for them. He won our salvation. The light of life shows us the way to heaven through Jesus our Savior. But that light that God has put inside of us doesn't want to stay hidden inside. Have you ever noticed, maybe you've looked at a, a door that you thought was sealed. Boy, when the sunlight is shining on the outside of that, even if there's just a tiny little crack for light to come through, you can see that light shining through. Light does not want to stay hidden. 
And our sermon text for today is one example of a Christian who let his light shine for the Lord. Philip, as I mentioned earlier, was one of the seven deacons that were elected by the early Christian church to help the 12 apostles take care of the needs of a growing church. But some of those men, like Philip and Stephen, didn't just help with the day-to-day needs by serving tables and helping people get the food that they need. They also went out and shared the gospel, the good news about Jesus and our salvation with the people around them. The Bible tells us when they elected these seven men to serve alongside of the apostles, they chose Philip and Stephen and the other five because they were filled with the Holy Spirit and with wisdom. Now that didn't mean that the other Christians, the other believers didn't have the Holy Spirit in them, but the Holy Spirit had given a special gift to these men that that other people recognized that they were so filled with joy and zeal to go do the Lord's work because of the Holy Spirit's presence and strength in their hearts. Listen to how the Holy Spirit was at work in Philip, enabling him to let his light shine. We read from our, our, God, our first lesson today. Now the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Candake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and was on his way home, was sitting in his chariot chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. And the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And this is the passage of scripture that the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shear is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? And then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's water. Who can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing." The Holy Spirit did his work to make the light in Philip's heart shine out. First of all, he put Philip in the right place at the right time. Of course, the Lord spoke to him, our verses tell us, and told him where to go walking along the road in order to meet the Ethiopian. We don't even know if Philip knew why he was supposed to go and walk along the road. And we shouldn't really expect the Holy Spirit to whisper in our ears and tell us where we should go in order to be witnessing next. The Bible tells us rather that we should be ready at any moment to give an answer for the hope that we have whenever someone asks us about our faith in Jesus. We won't always have a warning like Philip did that an opportunity is coming right down the path. But God does put us, the Holy Spirit does put us in the right places at the right time for us to let our light shine to others also. Maybe he's given you a neighbor that you can show your love for Jesus by helping them out in in small ways, in various ways, throughout a, a stretch of time, a long period of time that God allows you to be there near that person. Maybe there's a new hire at work somebody that most of the rest of the people in the office are given a hard time and making life difficult for them, and you could show God's love to that person by befriending them, helping them out, 
and showing them the kindness that God has placed in your heart, the love that you have for Jesus. The Holy Spirit might put you uh, on a plane or at an airport or on a bus, seated next to a person who's returning home from a funeral of a loved one and really needs to know about the good news of heaven as our own free gift through the forgiveness that comes to us by Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit may not whisper in your ear, but he sets up opportunities like this for us in our lives for us to to let our light shine like soft pitches for us to hit out of the park, just like he did for Philip. Philip followed the Holy Spirit's instructions and ran right up next to that chariot and stayed close to it. And notice, the Ethiopian just happened to be reading out loud from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, one of the most beautiful and clearest passages of Scripture in the Old Testament, pointing ahead to Jesus' suffering and death that would win our peace. The Ethiopian invited Philip to come up into his chariot. Honestly, I was marveling about that. I was, I was thinking about this. How many of you would be really complimented if someone came up to you while you were reading and said, do you understand what you're reading? We'd go, pfft, who are you talking to? But the Ethiopian says, no, I don't. Please, would you come up and explain it to me? The Holy Spirit moved the Ethiopian to, to be gracious and, and receive Philip as his guest in the chariot. It was a softball pitch and Philip hit it clear out of the park. He started from that passage where the Ethiopian was reading and took him all the way to Jesus as his Savior. Wow, that must have been some conversation. Wouldn't it have been interesting to be a fly on the wall in that chariot and hear that conversation as Philip took this man who didn't know about that the Messiah had come to understanding that Jesus' death on the cross was for him. It would be incredible to have been there, to have heard it, but yet that conversation that Philip had with the Ethiopian is one that you've heard many, many times before, one that you know from start to finish, one that you could easily share with someone else. Jesus is the promised Savior that God said from the very beginning was going to come. He was born in Bethlehem, lived a perfect life, suffered and died on the cross, took God's wrath on him so that you and I could be spared from God's punishment for eternity and instead live in his joy and presence forever. You know that story. You know exactly what Philip shared with the Ethiopian. And look what the Holy Spirit was doing as Philip let his light shine for this man. He filled the man's heart with such happiness to know about Jesus, his Savior, that he wanted to be baptized too. And then when they saw some water there in a pool, in a pond along the way, or perhaps a river, we don't even know what it was, they stopped and he said, hey, can't I be baptized too? Philip did just as he requested, took him into the water and baptized him. And even though as they came out of the water and back to the road, The Lord, the Holy Spirit took Philip away so that the the eunuch never saw him again probably for the rest of his entire life. Yet it says the Ethiopian went on his way rejoicing because he had become a child of God. He had learned about Jesus, his Savior. He now had the light of life in his heart. And you know what? I have to assume that Philip also went on his way filled with joy and excitement to have been part of that, to have been able to share his faith with others and let his light shine. The Holy Spirit had done his work through Philip and his words. That's the chief work of the Holy Spirit, to allow people to see the light of life and believe in Jesus as the Savior. And you and I, we get to share in that work of the Holy Spirit. We get to do our part in that like Philip, by following the Holy Spirit's direction and letting that light that's in us shine to others through our words, through our actions, and God's powerful word that we tell them. 
Philip and the Ethiopian continued to let their light shine after this day. Philip didn't hang up his hat and say, well, there it is, I've done it. I, I'm, I'm all set. I'm going to go back and take, take a break now. In fact, the Holy Spirit takes him through Samaria and through a different parts of the country where he continues to tell others about Jesus wherever he went. And it appears that the Ethiopian did the same. We don't hear any more about this Ethiopian eunuch in the Bible. We don't hear anything about him on the pages of history either. But we do know that for a very long time, Ethiopia has had a history of being a Christian country. In fact, already by the year 330 A.D., Christianity was declared as the state religion in Ethiopia. And even still today, Ethiopia boasts 60% of its people are Christian in an area of the world where many of the countries around it are far less Christian than Ethiopia. Was it because the Ethiopian went back and let his light shine? The Holy Spirit certainly put this man in a position of power and authority and influence where he would have the ability to reach out to many people across the entire country of Ethiopia and share with them the good news of Jesus as his Savior. Just think, from seemingly small opportunities, a little chance encounter along the road south of Jerusalem, God may have used Philip's witness and letting his light shine to bring an entire country to know about Jesus the Savior for thousands of years. How could God use little opportunities in your life to let your light shine? Could he save one person from the pit of hell and bring them to the joy of heaven for all eternity? Could he save an entire family that you witness to one of them and that person goes out and shares with their loved ones the light of life that God has put in their hearts? Could he convert and save an entire generation of a family or four generations down the road, perhaps even an entire nation of people like he did with Philip when you let your light shine. Don't judge what God can do with your witness in your life. The Bible says, and we read in our second lesson, that we are like stars in the sky. Probably the, the best known star in the sky and in the, in the northern hemisphere is the, the North Star. If there's one star that you know about one star that you can step out on a starry night and find, it's probably the North Star, Polaris. It's there year-round. As, as our Earth spins on its axis, the North Star seems to stay just about in one position. It never moves. And it's for that reason that uh, for ages, for thousands of years, we don't know how long, people have used that North Star to help them navigate by celestial navigation. Experienced travelers could find that star, even though it's not the brightest star in the sky, and using that star they could find their way home. The opportunities you have to show God's love to others and share the good news of Jesus with others may seem small. They may seem like a, a tiny light in an otherwise darkened sky, but God can use your little gospel light to show people the way to heaven so that they too can find their way home. And that's why we believers shine the light of life in our words, in our actions, and in our lives. Amen. Please stand. May God work in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Join us for worship at the following times, like us on Facebook, or visit our website for audio and video sermons, or to find out more about our congregation. God bless your week in the Lord.